Good morning, friends. We're leaving Lake Bled and we're heading to the Julian Alps today. First stop, Olympic ski jumping facilities. It's about 30 minutes detour from our Julian Alps route. So let's get started. We're Karin and Jeremy, an average couple with average jobs and limited vacation time. When we take trips, we have one or two weeks, three if we're lucky, and we want to see and do as much as possible when we travel. Join us as we maximize our vacation time on mapping it. We had a long day of driving ahead of us, so we got an early start to the day with an easy 45 minute drive from Lake Bled to the ski jumps at Planitza. The first ski jump here was constructed before 1930, so there's a long history of ski jumping in Slovenia. World records are constantly being set on these hills. We're at the ski jumps at Planitza. This is where the ski flying world championships are held every few years. They have eight jumps here. Ranging in size from very small behind us to pretty large over here, championship level, for beginners through very advanced. They also have the world's largest ski jump, which yeah. you can't really see from here. We're, we'll see that one next. Behind me is the world's largest ski jumping hill and it probably doesn't come across it on camera but it is so much bigger than the ones that we saw over on the other side. It's incredible. <laughs> this is also where you can do a zip line if you want to feel like you're jumping from this hill as well. The zip line here has the honor of being the steepest zip line descent in the world with an average incline of 38 degrees. To help put it into perspective, the hill size of the largest hill is 240 meters and the next largest hill is 138 meters, so the largest hill is over 100 meters bigger. With more time we would have stuck around and explored a bit longer, but we got back on the road and headed towards Triglav National Park and the 50 hairpin turns of the Versich Pass. The Versich Pass was built by Russian POWs during World War I in order to supply the Socha Front. Many of the POWs died in this process and on March 8, 1916, an avalanche occurred that killed hundreds more. This is the Russian chapel that was built to memorialize the deaths of the POWs. To access this chapel, there's a parking pull-off at turn 8, so you pull off and then you can hike up. This route is really popular with motorcyclists and bicyclists, and a very good bicyclist can actually do this in 30 minutes, which is faster than a car. So you better watch out and share the road. One thing we've noticed while driving this road is that all of the hairpin turns are cobblestone. It turns out the cobblestones are there for a very good reason, to give better traction on the turns. There are a lot of areas to pull off and enjoy the scenery or go for a hike along the Versich Pass, so don't rush to the top. Take your time and enjoy the views along the way. Don't take this road too quickly because you might have to share it with some fluffy friends like we did. We made it to the top of the Versich Pass. We just drove 24 hairpin turns and we have 26 to go to reach the bottom. Yay! <laughs> 
Once you get to the top, don't rush to go back down. Spend some time exploring the area. There's a large parking area and it's a great starting point for many hikes. There's also a small hut that sells snacks with incredible mountain views. We just finished driving the 50 hairpin turns of the Socha Pass, and now we're driving along the Socha River, and we're on a suspension bridge over the river. <laughs> the area of the Socha River Valley from here to the Adriatic saw heavy fighting during World War I as part of the Socha Front, and there are prominent reminders of the war scattered throughout the Julian Alps. From roads, bridges, and tunnels built during the war, to artifacts and debris, and even large cemeteries scattered throughout the region, World War I left an indelible mark on this beautiful land. The Church of St. Joseph has a lot of interesting symbolism inside. The interior of the church is painted in red, white, and blue, the national colors of Yugoslavia. It was a sign of nationalism that was dangerous to display during that time period. The ceiling of the church is painted with St. Michael clad in Yugoslavia's colors and shows the three enemies of Yugoslavia from World War II. The eagle represents Germany, the wolf represents Italy, and the serpent represents Japan. The medallions hanging on the walls depict the Stations of the Cross and show some of Yugoslavia's biggest enemies including Mussolini on one medallion and Hitler wearing lederhosen on another. We're at the Church of St. Joseph in the Socha Rally and we're in the cemetery behind me right here you can see this particular grave site is dedicated to those who fought in the partisan army during world war ii against hitler and the nazis up here on the hill there are la, 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 la. up here on the hill is a cemetery for the austro-hungarian soldiers that died during world war one there's about 1,400 buried here. We're at the Great Socha Gorge, standing on a very bouncy suspension bridge. What do you think about the suspension bridge? It's very bouncy and high up. Yeah, how does it make you feel? Not great. <laughs> Check it out though. Some people even jump off the cliffs into the water, but I'm sure it's not here because it is not deep enough. In 1918, a young Ernest Hemingway drove ambulances for the Red Cross along the Italian front and was stationed not far from the Socha River Valley. How do you like this road? <laughs> it's very tight. Uh, there's like... Of course you're bringing us up here as you're saying that I should learn to drive. Well, okay. As I have to go backwards through this <laughs> town. I think you can learn to drive after we descend whatever we're uh -huh. going to see. The Italian mausoleum in Coburid. This mausoleum was built in 1938 when this area was still part of Italy and ruled by Mussolini. This mausoleum holds the remains of over 7,000 Italian troops from World War I. Their names are listed alphabetically. It has their rank too. Soldato, Sergente, 
Solo Tenete, Coparale, Capitano. The drive up here was very tight and required driving through a very tight town as well, but it was well worth it. Now we're leaving the Socha Valley and heading to Croatia. Woohoo! We're at a local product market in Koberid, Slovenia, and everything they sell here is made locally, as the name suggests. There is so much to choose from. Let's go see what they have. The Dairy Isle. Let's get some milk. Honey is very popular in Slovenia, and they have a large production. This one looks good. See anything you like? <laughs> a lot. A lot. What did you find? You can fill up your own wine bottle. Wine on tap. <laughs> We're in the chip aisle. That can only mean one thing. It's time for another episode of Chips and Trips. Let's pick something out. With a selection of snacks and souvenirs picked out, we headed back on the road. I was expecting the river to be like more, like more, more gushing. Gushing, that's a word. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking watery, but like it's more watery. Like, <laughs> it's already watery. Oh, cute goats! Look at them. Yeah, they're just like on. <laughs> they are so funny. We enjoyed the very scenic drive along the Socha River and made a couple pit stops along the way to stretch our legs and marvel at some pretty picturesque bridges. On the way to our second bridge, we took a wrong turn and ended up in Italy. With open borders between EU countries, that's a very easy thing to accidentally do. We're in Solcon, and behind us is the world's largest stone arch bridge. How cool is that? Wow. Wow. Solcon Most is the world's largest single-span stone arch railroad bridge. It has a span of 85 meters and was originally built in 1904. It was destroyed by the Austrian army during World War I and was rebuilt by the Italians in 1925. The bridge also survived World War II when a bomb hit the bridge in 1945 but did not explode. This was our last stop in Slovenia. We had a lot of fun exploring this country and we can't wait to come back and experience more in the future. But right now, we're heading to Croatia. See you in the next one.